Ladies and gentlemen, what we have here today is not a comparison between motorcycles without fairings, but a genuine motoristic mixed martial arts MMA encounter. In the red corner, we have the Ducati Street Fighter V4 SP2, boasting 208 horsepower for a weight of 196.5 kilograms. And in the blue corner, holding the title of the most powerful hyper-naked motorcycle on planet Earth, and possibly even in the entire universe, we have the BMW M1000R with 210 horsepower and a weight of 199 kilograms, including a full tank of gasoline. So let's not proceed any further and let's delve into the heart of this fight without holding back between the two angriest and fastest exponents in the world without a windshield but with numerous fins. Well then, we have 418 horses here with us, but before we get into the heart of the driving sensations and the finesse they have given me, let's take a moment to discover them from a technical point of view. Because yes, it is true, they are both very powerful, both without fairings, but in reality they are quite different from each other, from the motor configuration to some engineering approaches, obviously. However, there are also many similarities. The Street Fighter from Borgo Panigale mounts a slightly softened version of V4 Desmo 16 road engine of Panigale V4S. With a displacement of 1,103 cc, but listening to the thunder of the exhaust at idle and the tinkling of the STM Evo SBK dry clutch, it doesn't seem to have anything sweet at all. And the clutch is one of the elements of the Ducati SP formula, which also includes the extremely light carbon wheels, 1.4 kilos lighter than the forged aluminum Marchesini of the V4S, Mar-style brake calipers, and adjustable foot pegs made of solid aluminum. Above all, here are the same Olin Smart EC 2.0 as the Panigale, not only the semi-active system and suspension models of the 2020 Ducati race replica, namely the TTX 36 Mono and NX 34, but also all the internal components and the attitude to devour the curbs. The Panigale V4S 2022, however, brings updates differentiating it from the previous SP and this SP2. Instrumentation with external shift light and the possibility of using the track Evo screen with a horizontal bar graph at the top and real-time display of driving aids. The new power mode full also makes its electronic debut, without torque limitations except for first gear. They also modify tank shape to optimize leg grip in bends and swing arm pivot position, raised by 4 millinit for improved stability during acceleration. Instead, carbon wings on each side still generate 35 kilo downforce at 270 km h. Price I praise God. The biplane solution for the wings is also adopted by BMW, although in this case with a less aeronautical and more automotive design. The downward force declared in this case is 11 kilos at 220 kilowatt per hour. For the rest, in Munich they have chosen the simplest and irreverent way to create their track hyper naked. In practice they used a 2023 S1000RR, removed fairings and added wide flat handlebar on upper steering plate. Okay, it's not like that but we're close to reality. The engine is the same four-cylinder inline as the race replica with 999cc displacement and variable cam timing on the intake side. Since the matter was at risk of not being exciting enough, there's also a shortened broadcast. Fourth, fifth and sixth are shorter and the crown has one more tooth. The double beam aluminum frame, semi-active DDC suspensions, monoblock brakes with M calipers and carbon wheels remain almost unchanged from the race replica. These last ones, with 1.6 kg saved compared to standard aluminum forged ones, are main highlight of M competition package, only available with black base livery, bringing total price of Bavarian Canon to 28,500 euros. 
The same package also includes numerous carbon fiber parts, footrests and handlebar levers made from solid and adjustable single seat saddle and GPS data acquisition. The electronics are complete, with three Race Pro riding modes fully configurable from every point of view. Ah, and as on the last RR, there is also the brake slide assist, in case you want to show off with some drifts at the end of the straightaways. The most observant geeks among you will have recognized the box lane as a relatively exotic and not so popular circuit, which is fairly unusual and not very well known. I am referring to the Lesteril, a historic Portuguese track located just outside Lisbon. Throughout its history, the track has hosted prestigious events such as Formula One, World Superbike and MotoGP. Today, I have the privilege of using the track although I share it with many other motorcyclists thanks to the well-organized and impeccable management. I would like to express my gratitude at the beginning of the promo racing video, which was filmed here approximately 3,000 kilometers away from my home. In the video, I had the opportunity to test and appreciate the unique characteristics of two spectacular motorcycles. I will also share my opinion on which one is the best, but this will be discussed towards the end of the video. Before delving into the video, it is essential to highlight another crucial factor that contributed to the success of this high-level head-to-head comparison, ensuring that both contenders were on an equal playing field, particularly in terms of the tires used. The tires, the tires, those round, black, sticky things, super sexy when they wear out on the track that allow us enthusiasts to enjoy, to get excited between the curbs. For this occasion, I chose two identical sets of Pirelli Diablo Super Corsa SC, which are specifically carved in racing track compound to enhance performance and provide an exhilarating experience for us passionate track enthusiasts. I'm talking about the V4 version, so the latest release with SC1 compound both on the front and on the rear. On the other hand, in this location, the temperature is high, the asphalt is not excessively abrasive, and therefore it appeared to me to be the most suitable option also for ensuring a good grip, a strong push from the tires, which is precisely what I experienced during the laps completed over the course of two days here in Portugal. The Pirelli Super Corsa SCV4 in particular has a multitude of innovations when compared to its predecessor, the V3 model. On the contrary, it can be said that they have been completely redesigned. The most obvious thing is the flash notch that is now broken in the middle. Obviously, they maintain an extensive sleek area on the shoulders for maximum grip. The profiles are derived from the latest evolutions brought by Pirelli in the Superbike World Championship and therefore a racing tire in every respect. Obviously, the three classic tire compound choices of the Milanese tire manufacturer remain SC1, SC2 and SC3. Today, to make a long story short, they did an incredible job in managing all these horses and, among other things, at Storil, with two very long, very violent accelerations on the right shoulder, a road tire, in my opinion, could not have held up, or rather, could not have made me enjoy as much as I did today. So, introductions made, premises thrown, now let's get into the heart of discovering the subtleties of these two cars that I have already told you made me enjoy them greatly, but in a slightly different manner from each other. Now, without further ado, let's delve into the intricate details and nuances of these remarkable vehicles that have captivated my attention and brought me immense pleasure. Let's initiate from this side from the Street Fighter V4 SP2 and let's commence with the riding position. Despite the angry and specialized appearance of this vehicle, it is the most comfortable in a certain sense between the two, the most relaxed if we want, because of the higher handlebar that keeps you a little more upright. This is accompanied, however, by the properly raised footrests, let's say to a rear part of the handlebar footrest saddle triangulation that is truly from Panagale, practically like a large part of the technique. While in front, we are on a slightly more road-oriented naked bike than the BMW with a design that prioritizes performance and agility. The BMW is indeed more spacious in terms of the saddle. I particularly liked how you can move forward or backward on the saddle to position yourself well depending on the riding phase. 
but its peculiarity compared to the S1000R, which is a naked bike that now seems quiet but was already very fast, is here in the handlebar that is even flatter, even more open, and this leads you to have a posture that beyond the foot pegs, which appear slightly lower than the Ducati, is extremely more similar to that of a pure race replica. Not only the frame and engine of the M1000R are the same as those of an S1000RR 2023, but also the riding position in a certain sense follows it, even if obviously the handlebar is positioned higher. This difference in riding position means that there is a difference in the initial approach to the two bikes, in the sense that the Ducati immediately makes you feel at home in terms of comfort. But when you start pushing, at least for my preferences, it forces you to take in a lot of air on your chest and to have even more strength in your arms and especially in your forearms to handle the push, precisely the air pressure, not only on the straight but also on the fast corners. On the other hand, the BMW with this trick not only loads more weight on the front end, but also achieves better aerodynamics and consequently less fatigue for the rider. Initially, the BMW is simple, but I imagine, as I can't say this today, having only tried them on the track, that on the road, the position of the Ducati would be more suitable. So in this sense, in Burgo Panigale, they wanted to do something extreme, but keeping it a bit more sensible, at least in the riding position for the road. In Monaco, on the other hand, they didn't care and went straight to the goal, even in the driving position of creating something specific for the track, but without the fairings. Let's stay on this side of our virtual ring now to discuss a fundamental chapter of this challenge, which is the engine. Here we have a four-cylinder variable camshaft timing engine that, as we mentioned earlier, delivers an impressive 210 horsepower. This figure may seem senseless and crazy, but it is accompanied by exceptional manageability, drivability, and exploitability. It's truly incredible how BMW manages to make you not perceive the power of the engine at all. In this car, the performance is delivered with politeness, making you feel comfortable during the initial laps of the morning when you need to familiarize yourself with it. However, above all, it puts you in a position to extract even more performance from the engine when it comes to chasing the best lap times. This level of performance is truly remarkable and enhances the overall driving experience. The Ducati in this sense is slightly different. Its engine is a bit rougher if you find yourself trotting, but on the other hand, when you start it up, it has a phenomenal throttle response, an absolutely neural connection between your right wrist and the rear tire. However, this is also accompanied by a certain level of violence when you push yourself into the most aggressive riding modes, which are obviously the ones we have ridden in these two days. Currently, we have experienced one day and a half of riding at Estoril. In terms of pure speed, I know that it is something you are wondering about, and it is one of the most frequent questions that arise in the comparison between the Street Fighter SP2 and the M1000R. The truth is, we are really very, very close. The BMW has a little more speed, but the overall feeling is that the difference is not significant, especially considering the performance of the engine. What it can give more, it can give at high speeds. And so, we come back to the discussion of the riding position and the aerodynamics from before. Here, by crouching much more, you can offer less resistance to the air, while here, it has a little more sail effect, and as insignificant as it may seem, at these levels, at these speeds, it can make a difference. To clarify the motor differences, it is important to specify that both of these motorcycles are scary due to their incredible speed and the level of play they allow on straight roads, even though they are not the most recent or powerful ones in the 1000cc category. In short, they cannot be compared to their fairing-equipped counterparts. Moving on, let's discuss another crucial aspect of this challenge, the riding experience. When it comes to these two hyper-naked bikes, 
it is essential to determine which one comes closer to or perhaps exactly replicates the sensations of a super sport or a pure race replica. To do so, I will now shift my focus to the Street Fighter V4 SP2, which is positioned next to these motorcycles and delve deeper into this important chapter of the comparison. The Ducati gets incredibly close to us in a truly phenomenal way, but obviously with its unique style and approach that sets it apart from the rest. Among the strengths of this sensational vehicle, in my opinion, are the brakes, in my opinion. We talked about the technical equipment, but it's how this translates into the fine sensations on your two index fingertips when you brake at the end of the straight, maybe downhill like here at Estoril, that makes the difference and the Ducati is impeccable. On the other hand, this Brembo system, regardless of the motorcycle on which it is mounted, is always a guarantee. It is the best standard braking system that one could desire, to the point of remembering to go and approach a good racing system. Obviously in this, it is also supported by a perfect ABS, which in the suitable track settings, it is not possible to call into question, maybe some real rider, but if you are normal people, humans, this is out of the question. Safety net is there, but short killer brakes at the maximum, and also the bike is stable in these phases, thanks to the sum of several elements, not only to the Olin's fork that gives great support in these critical moments, but also thanks to the gearbox, which from a mechanical and electronic point of view is perfect. The climbs with the downshift bleeper, as well as the uphill changes are a shot, clear, precise, dry, they do not break down the bike and never leave you with the doubt of having chosen the incorrect gear. Regarding the suspensions, the Olin Smart EC 2.0 also ensures reliability. In this instance, it utilizes the same internal components as the Panigale V4S, thereby enhancing the Street Fighter's racing capabilities to a level that is characteristic of the Panigale model. The feeling is essentially identical. There is identical support, identical ability to accelerate forcefully and to guide you with precision to the rope at any pace you have in mind. In this sense, the only aspect that did not make me extremely enthusiastic about utilizing this remarkable equipment is specifically the riding position. And we return to the starting point. I would have preferred a lower handlebar, a more aggressive posture on the front to enhance the front load and better exploit the racing capabilities of this bike. Yes, racing, not sporty, they are truly racing. And this is due to staying slightly higher on the front end between the area that takes you away, the weight that naturally shifts back, and the resulting acceleration to move the front end more with each lap. In my opinion, the Street Fighter V4 SP2 is not relaxing, using an improper term, unlike its fared counterpart, the Panigale V4S. And coming back to our comparison, it's not as friendly, even at breakneck speeds, as the M1000 manages to be. And speaking of the M1000R, at this point I have to take a few more steps and move to this side to talk to you about her, the monster from Munich with its mega spoilers that, beyond the hyper-aggressive look as you may have already understood from what has been said so far from the comparisons made so far, puts on the table a relative ease of driving for a vehicle with this power capable of reaching this speed and a capacity of not fully tapping into your physical energy reserves. In summary, the M1000R is a powerful and visually striking machine that offers a thrilling driving experience without completely exhausting the driver. In order to enhance your endurance and prolong your performance, this could potentially be misconstrued throughout the entirety of the session to ensure a consistent printing of lap times even after 18 minutes of a solid free practice session and this is generally regarded as its greatest asset. In my opinion, it manages to achieve something more significant than the mere sum of its individual components, which are all of an exceptionally high caliber. One of the characteristics that significantly contributes to this broader impression is the composed manner in which it maneuvers and enters the corner with precision and control. 
The Street Fighter V4 SP2 is, as we mentioned, extremely agile, incredible off the charts, but can be challenging if you lack skill. The M1000R, also equipped with carbon wheels, is nearly as agile. While it doesn't quite reach that same level, it compensates with a more progressive nature. When descending in a bend, the bike requires less attention in dosing the force and movements in the saddle, making it more forgiving and allowing for some excess of impetuosity to be accommodated. And then its engine is amazing, we mentioned it, but in this overall impression of high level, two things ruin the almost perfection. And they are two elements that without a direct comparison with the Ducati would have been impossible to notice. On one hand, there is braking, there is power, there is bite, there is the possibility of deep braking practically like the Ducati, but the feeling at the lever is not as clear. You can't really perceive the force of the pistons against the discs as you do with the Brembo system of the Ducati. Another aspect to consider is the gearbox, specifically in terms of the lever feel. If the Ducati is considered the ultimate benchmark, the BMW requires some time to adapt its foot positioning because uphill it can feel a bit rubbery, but when going downhill, this slight rubberiness, along with a subtle hardness and lack of crispness in the gearbox, can sometimes lead to mistaking the gear or not being able to select the desired gear with the timing you would prefer. It is a finesse, but considering the level we are discussing in this clash, it is necessary to report it because it is on these little details that the victory of two bikes like these is determined. In this intense battle between the two most track-focused hypernakeds on the planet, all that remains to be mentioned is the electronics. Okay, it is very sophisticated and super effective in both cases, but starting from clearly different approaches. On the Ducati, it is immediately clear that the entire package of riding aids, when set in the appropriate modes for the context of the corners, is designed with one goal in mind, to make you go as fast as possible. In addition to the superb performance of each control, a crucial role is played by the spectacular Track Evo screen on the instrument panel. In reality, just a swift glance, merely a glimpse while you're driving at full throttle to visually identify which system is intervening and being highlighted in the process. This aids in understanding what's happening on the bike allowing for precise intervention and adjustments based on accurate information gathered. The BMW, on the other hand, appears to be more understanding when it comes to less experienced drivers. Irrespective of the level set for the traction control, in reality, it is as though the genuine potential of the four-cylinder engine is unleashed, released solely with the bike slightly more straight, thus with a slight but noticeable additional focus on safety. Not that this has ever prevented me from experiencing the rear slide out in a controlled manner when exiting the hairpin, even on the M1000R, but even in these situations, I had the sensation of a greater presence of the safety net, providing a heightened sense of security and reassurance. And all this is something I had already tried on the M1000RR with fairing at Mugello, and you can find the video here on the channel. What, for my level and my driving style, I actually continue to find positive because it somehow lightens my brain from the psychological pressure of having to manage up to 200 HP at the wheel on the edge of the limit. A pilot, on the other hand, I am quite certain would consider it a limit, particularly when compared directly to the Ducati motorcycle. To conclude, in terms of suspension, it should be noted that BMW offers the possibility to separately adjust hydraulic compression and extension only for the rear, therefore only for the mono, not for the fork, which instead has a single damping setting. It is a finesse, okay? However, I firmly believe that the individuals with a strong grasp of technology, a looser right wrist, and a frequent presence at the track could potentially find it somewhat limiting in their quest for the optimal setup to match their pace. Oh, and while we're on the topic of hypernaked, let me not forget to mention the amusing matter of wheelies. After all, this is the Superbike Italy YouTube channel. 
Undoubtedly, both motorcycles are capable of maintaining an upright position and sustaining high speeds for extended distances, but in terms of composure, simplicity, and the sheer enjoyment it provides, the BMW unquestionably outperforms the Ducati in this particular aspect. So, at this moment, which one emerges victorious between the Street Fighter V4 SP2 and the M1000R? I would like to inform you that this is an unpleasant task for me. Declaring a winner between the two is something that should not be left solely to a single person. Today we drove it jointly, behind the camera is Noisy Boy, and we had contrasting opinions on the matter at hand. On one hand, there is absolute perfection, but it is not always easy to manage. It requires careful attention and effort to maintain its flawless state. On the other hand, there is an incredible package that gives you more than the sum of its parts, which closely resembles the S1000RR in terms of driving and not only, but also has some wrinkles to make the driving not idyllic. At the present moment, if I had to make a choice, I would probably lean towards the BMW, given how it has allowed me to easily push my limits and explore new boundaries with effortless ease. On the other hand, I believe that for a more skilled person than me or for a pilot, the Ducati could provide more satisfaction and actually behind the camera there is someone else who preferred it. So yes, I do give my preference to BMW, but don't take it as an excess of diplomacy. It is impossible to say that one is clearly better than the other without trying them, without judging according to one's own preferences. Regarding this news, I would like to remind you that if you desire additional information, there are comments provided below where you can inquire about more details concerning these two bikes. Subsequently, I must vacate the pit lane and potentially change a tire in order to fully relish the remaining afternoon sessions taking place here in Estoril in the company of Promo Racing, the Pirelli Super Corsa V4 SC and these remarkable dual machines. So we'll see each other next week or in a few days here on the Superbike Italia YouTube channel and obviously on all our social channels always and anyway with the gas.